Hey, hot doggers! I'm Dan, and this is 52 Weeks of Dogging, a weekly series where every week we discuss a new topic that teaches you how to start and run your own hot dog cart business. On this week's episode, we're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna discuss permits, getting your permits, how to find your permits, uh, permit costs, what do you what you need to have permits, what like what equipment you're gonna have to have, um, all 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 different facets of getting your permits. Um, so let's get started with where to look. I get this all the time. The biggest question, most question I get asked the most next to what type of hot dogs do I sell. That comes later. That'll come later in this series. The other big question I get is how do I get my permits? Where do I get started to apply for my permits? Let's start with where to look. I'm going to flip the screen over here and we're going to actually go through this as if I were looking to get permits and I'm going to show you how to find this information for your area. I'm going to use Omaha, Nebraska because that's just that's uh, that's just where I, I'm going to use. But I'm going to use Omaha, Nebraska as an example. You can do this for your city and your state as well, and it should work out the same way. You should be able to get as much information as possible, all the information that you need regarding your permits, by following these steps. So we're going to start with we're going to start with Google. The majority of the information that you're looking for can be found online. You can see I already typed it in there. We're going to go Omaha, Nebraska, hot dog cart vendor permit. This is just a regular standard old Google search. You can see. I don't know what that is, but you can see right here, the very top, mobile food vendor permit for Park Omaha. I'm guessing that is Omaha's city website. And then Department of Agriculture has a temporary food establishment permit uh, for Nebraska. So that would be, I'm guessing, a state, um, a state permit that you would have to have. All of this is right here up at the top. Application Inspection, Department of Agriculture. So we're going to click on this very top, the very first resource here, the very first option. And right here, Park Omaha, the city of Omaha encourages the coexistence of mobile food, mobile food vendors and permanent food establishments, providing appropriate places for each within the fabric of the city and accommodating the interests of each with the goal of achieving a rich and diverse community. So this mobile food vendor application, you can see right here, it's all in bold. You can download your application. You might even be able to submit it online. Let's click and see. Uh, okay, so this they put the application online for you to print out. So you'll print out the application, fill it all out, and then shows you right here. You can call them with questions. All the information that you need right here online, right here on the website. You can download and it shows you where you can set up. Our, 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 my city here does, does a similar thing where you have to have, uh, you have to have a separate permit to set up. Like you can set up anywhere out here without, a, without an additional permit, but anywhere within this blue area, you have to have a separate permit through the city to set up, which the blue area here where I'm at is our downtown district. Um, which I've got those permits as well. So this has this the website has all the information, mobile food vendor application, um, informational booklets, health health department permit, Douglas County Health Department permit information. Again, this would be a city license through the mobile food the mobile food vendor permit application, and then a county health department license. Um, through Douglas County in Omaha, Nebraska, I'm assuming. 
So it's the same thing here. We have a county health department permit and we have a city license, city permit that we have to have. Um, all of this is right here, one click into Google and it tells me all the information I need. I can print off the application. Um, permits are $100. It gives you the locations and fee restrictions right here. Um, $100 for each trailer or cart. Additional $100 primarily operating with the downtown. So it's the same way here in, in Omaha, Nebraska. They charge you a little extra uh, to operate in the downtown area. Uh, 50 feet. Vendors cannot locate within 50 feet of a permanent food establishment during hours food is sold unless the establishment offers written consent. We have that same rule here. We have to be 50 feet away from the entrance of any, any uh, permanent food establishment. Mobile food vendors wanting to vend at the mall in the food truck parking area must be have approval from Mecca. That gives you a different contact information for a different a different permit that you might have if you want to if you want to vend in that specific that specific area here's a map like this this website gives you everything you need if you live in omaha nebraska it's all all the information you need is right here on the website one click away from google uh, they give you all the rules the regulations where you can and can't park uh, parking space limited, limited to two hour parking. You must pay the meter and can remain in that space for four consecutive hours. So you can you can have a space for four hours. Um, not customers, your customers can't stand and see all the regulations right here. Mobile food vendors can only serve, and this is a big one right here. This is this is this is a big one. Mobile food vendors can only serve between the hours of six a.m. and two thirty a.m. seven days a week. The Omaha Police Department may limit those hours if necessary. This is a big one here. A lot of people, and, and I, I operate overnight, so my carts are out until 5 a.m. sometimes, 6 a.m. if it's busy. Uh, we get out from 8 p.m. from 8 p.m. sometimes to 6 or yeah 8 p.m. sometimes to 6 a.m. Um, so that's a big one. If you have a location, say you want to set up at a nightclub or a bar, and they stop serving food at 1 a.m. They want you to come out and serve hot dogs, you know, through the night um, after their kitchen closes. Our bars close at 3 a.m., so that's two hours of, of food sales that you that you you could possibly gain if you have this restriction. Um, you probably wouldn't be able to to serve that location if you're going to be parking on, on on public property, city property. Now something else you something else you might consider if the bar ha if you're if you're set up in the bar's parking lot which is private property that might not be subject to these time restrictions. So you might not you might still be able to do that if you if you you know and set up if the bar's open until 3 a.m. you can set up until you know set up out there from midnight to 4 a.m. And sell to their customers, um, still sell to their customers, so long as you're on private property. So that's a big distinguishing factor as well: private versus public property. Generally, if you're paying for permits to operate through a city, it's gonna, it's the, these reg, these regulations would only apply to if you're parked on city property, city parking spaces, city sidewalks. If you're parked on private property. You're generally not going to be held to these these restrictions. So you that's something you would you would want to ask. You would want to call these people if if that's something you're looking into um, through the through the overnight hours. That's something that you would want to call them and ask them to get clarification on. Does that apply to private park private parking lots as well? Um, if I'm on private property, um, you can't sell alcoholic beverages, alcohol food items. That's all. That's pretty much going to be a thing. Everywhere, I don't know anywhere that would allow you to, to sell from a cart, alcohol from a cart. Um, all of this stuff is 100% everything that you would need to know or to get you started. Um, let's see, everything that you would need to know to get you started with your, with, with your permit process. And the thing is, once you contact these people... You can go to the, say you you contact the people for the mobile the city permit that we pulled up earlier. If you go down here, where was that phone number? You can contact these people. 
Um, if you call this number, they'll give you they'll give you all the information as far as if you have to have other permits through the health department. If you have to have other permits to work specific areas, they can. If you call them up, print this print this application off. You can call them up and get all the information that you need. Um, they can email you all the permits. I mean, it's so easy. The permits are the easiest part about um, getting this business started. All, now, all, all locations are going to be different. I can't tell you that it's $100 everywhere because it's not. I pay more than that for my permits. So um, I know if you look up some spaces in New York, there's some people who pay a quarter million dollars, $250,000 a year um, to, to set up a hot dog cart at some of the most popular places in Central, around Central Park. Um, the museums, the big tourist destinations, um, those, those hot dog carts pay thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars for, for the most popular spots. So it's going to be different for every city, every county, every location. It's going to be different pricing. It's going to be different application processes. What I'm showing you here is just how to get started. Um, where to look, what to type in, you know, make sure you make sure you include hot dog vendor permits because a lot of times if you go to Google and you type in food truck permit, for example, here in my area, food trucks are separate from hot dog carts. They're not considered the same thing. They're considered different different ventures. So they have different requirements, different permits. It's actually easier to have a food truck where I'm at than it is to have a sidewalk cart. I don't know why. That's just how the cookie crumbles here in my in my area. Um, so make sure you know if if you want a food if you have a food truck you type in food truck. If you want to do a hot dog cart, make sure you do you type in you. That's what you, you're searching for. Whatever it is that you want to do, you go to Google. You type in mm, Omaha, Nebraska. You type in. Bloomington, Illinois, wherever you are, your location, hot dog vendor permit. And that should bring up anything generally within the top three listings. You should be able to find all the information that you need. Um, and if you can't find all the information you need, you'll find a phone number, even up here. You can go to contact, contact. Um, you know, you'll find a, a phone number. You'll find a contact form. You'll find social media, um, whatever you need to get all the information that, that you need to get this, this permit permit process started. Now, the different types of permit, like I said, you're going to have a health department permit. You're going to have a city permit. And this is just generally speaking. It doesn't apply to everywhere, but this is just generally speaking. Um, you're going to have a city permit, you're going to have a health department permit, and that's that's all I have to have where I'm at. It uh, looks like here you have to have a additional permit for uh, Department of Agriculture, and I think Florida is the same way. Some A lot of places in Florida you have to have a state permit through the Department of Agri Agriculture or um, the Department of Food, and their, their Food Safety Administration, I guess. Um, but yeah, so that that would be considered a state permit. So you would have to have a state permit, a county, and a and a city permit, and a lot of locations. So take that into take that into into account. Make sure you're considering all the permits that you have to have. Um, generally, it's only going to be two or three permits, and the applications, like as I showed you, the applications are incredibly easy. Let's look at this health department. Let's see what the health department brings up here. Um, that's a sticker that you, you would have to have. Looks like they change their sticker color every year. April 1st through March 31st. Inspection checklist. That's a beautiful thing. They'll tell you, they tell you exactly what exactly what they're looking for. Um, commissary kitchen. So you, you would have to have, if you're in Omaha, Nebraska, you have to have a commissary, uh, commissary shared kitchen. Um, you have to pay for a commissary, pay monthly for a commissary. Uh, generally, that's usually fifty to hundred bucks, unless you know somebody that owns a restaurant and they allow you to use their restaurant as their commissary. 
Um, it's not that expensive for a commissary here, anyway. I don't know most, like I said, the permits and fees don't apply to everywhere. This is all just based on my knowledge and, and what I'm reading here for Omaha, Nebraska. Um, so these are some of their permit fees. You got permit types, ice cream, if you're doing push cards, mobile food and drink vendor. Um, so you would be looking at $539 for your cart fees, uh, for your permit fees through their health department. So you tack the five thirty nine plus two hundred dollars through for the state or the city permit, you're at seven hundred and thirty nine dollars a year uh, for your licensing fees in Omaha, Nebraska, and that's only if you work downtown. It looked like they said it was an extra hundred dollars if you work downtown. If you don't work in that within that blue space on their map, it's it's six hundred and thirty nine dollars. Um, and they go through the descriptions of each, how to pay the permit fees. And the thing is, generally speaking, what you'll want to do is you want to ask them, obviously you can print the permit, you can print the applications off for free. Print it off, print it off, fill it out. And when you go to send it to them, ask them if you have to pay at the time of drop, at the time of application, or if you have to pay after the inspection once the once the, once it gets approved. <coughs> More often than not, I've never heard of any any application for this being they where they charge you for the application. More often than not, you don't have to pay anything until you it comes time to actually get your permit. Like they'll go through and process the application, they'll do your inspections. And once they approve everything, that's when you have to pay. So this is this is this you can find any any information you need, you can find it all online. Like I said, just do a simple Google search for your area hot dog vendor permit. And that'll pull up whatever information you need. If it doesn't, what you'll want to do is find uh, your business you can you can google the contact information for your let's say Oma let's say they didn't have all that information or they didn't I couldn't download the application from the internet we would do Omaha Nebraska health department phone number Bam, Douglas County Health Department. Of course, they're closed. Um, it's 12, 19 in the morning where I'm at, but and it's Martin Luther King Day. But all you got to do is just Google it. Health Department, uh, Omaha, Nebraska Health Department pulls up their phone number, pulls up their information. Uh, Omaha, Nebraska... Business license, Nebraska.gov, business licensing, city of Omaha, licenses and permits, top two, top two results. Those will give you all the information that you need. They'll also have contact information where you can find their, you can find phone numbers to contact them if the information, if the applications are not online, you can't download them. You have to go somewhere to pick them up, to fill them out. You'll find all of that, all that information here. You need a phone number to call somebody, you'll find it here. You can find it online. Anything, anything and everything that you need to know is on Google. So this is how you get started with your permits. Let me go back here. Let's see. All right. Back to me. Howdy. So that is how you get started. That is where you want to start. Fill out your permits. Generally, the time frame. Let's talk time frame, right? So everywhere is going to be different. Most of the places that I've heard of, they require a 30-day lead time. So if, say, you want to go out on March 1st, 
You want to, you want your uh, grand opening, your opening day. You have a location, you have a cart, you have everything that you need, and you want your your grand opening day to be March first. If they say a thirty day lead time, that means it's going to take thirty days to process your application, to get your cart inspected, and assuming that nothing is wrong and you don't have to go back and redo anything. It'll be 30 days um, before you're allowed to get, actually get out and operate and you're, you'll get your permit. So with that being the case, there's 28 days in February. So you're going to have to make sure January, January 20th, I think, 20 or 28th, 29th, you'll want to have your permit applications in by January 28th or 29th. That gives them that 30 days, and you'll have your permit by the time you, you have your grand opening, March 1st. So generally, it's 30 days. A lot of times, a lot of times I've, like I said, I've never heard, it, heard, never heard of it being longer or shorter. Um, they tell you 30 days. I know in my case, my first year, I had mine in a week. Um, but, of course, the... the Health department was already aware of the cart. The cart already had its inspection for that year because I bought a cart that was already licensed. So um, the health department already had that information, but it, it made it a lot easier for me. But they they still had um, so two weeks. I've had I've had my permits in two weeks where I had to go through everything. Um, I had to get city license. Um, I had to get inspections I had to get health department inspections and health department permits applications um, it's gone as fast as two weeks for me but they still tell you 30 days and it's also taken six months at one point when the health department was short-staffed they had to move some people around at the health department and they were short-staffed it took six months so I was actually behind I was actually late with submitting my city permits because the health department was um, the health department I didn't give me their approval, and I have to have the health department approval before I get my city approval, my city uh, uh, permit. So generally 30 days. So plan on that, and that's something you might talk to them about. Um, you might, that's something you want to ask them if you, if you, when you call them, if it's not listed on the local website or the, the application. Um, that's something that you'll want to call them and ask them. How long does this process usually take? Um, is there anything that would on your guys' end that could possibly delay it? Um, so if you if you have a set date that you want to open up, just keep that in mind because that that could happen to where it, there could be something that that would delay it, or you could get it sooner if they're all caught up. Um, costs, like I said, we we already went over costs. The it can range anywhere from hundreds of thousands of dollars down to a hundred dollars. I've never seen anywhere that was less than a hundred dollars. Um, for for permits, but I mean, hey, if you're if, you, if you're a vendor and you pay less than a hundred dollars a year per cart, comment down below. And let me know where you're at. I'm interested. Um, what to ask? Like I said, if 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 you can't find something online and you have to call, you're gonna add you, some things you want to ask is pricing for the permits. What the permits are gonna cost you. What permits, what other permits, accessory permits you're going to need, like I said, if you call the state and they say, well, you have to have a state permit, a health, a health county health department permit, and a department of agriculture permit, you're going to want to ask them, do you have contact information for the other two people? Is there a contact name, a person that handles these specific types of permits? We have that here. I can't just call the health department. There's a specific person that I have to call who handles the mobile hot dog food vendors. Um, so ask them that you're going to want to ask them, you know, what's the general, what's the general cost for, do you know what the cost is for all, all the, all three, um, are all three only good for a year? Usually the all, all part, all permits have to be renewed every year. Usually. Again, if yours is different, comment down below. Let me know. I'm curious. Required equipment. You're going to want to know what equipment, the, what, what equipment is required on the cart. This is a huge one. You're going to spend a few thousand dollars. You're going to spend a few thousand dollars on a cart 
you want to make sure that it meets the guidelines, it meets the requirements, it meets the regulations for your city, county, and the state. They're all going to have their own requirements for what your cart has to have on it, has to be equipped with. Ask each and every one of those divisions, what do you, what, what do you, what do you require that I have on my cart? They're going to say, we require you to have at least two sinks. They're going to say, we require you to have three dish sinks and a hand wash sink, so four sinks. They're gonna, they might say, we require you to have a paper towel mount or a paper towel holder. We require you to have a trash can. We require you to have a light that puts out a specific brightness of lumens. Um, they might require, in my case, the, I mean, this is all in my case. Like, I'm required, this is how my, my health department and city require, uh, require for me. Um, I'm required to have... Uh, electric water pump, not just not just any old electric water pump. I can't have a switch on my water pump where I turn the water on and off uh, with a switch. It has to be a pressurized water pump. So just like your house, when you turn the sink on, the pump kicks on and starts pumping water through. When you turn the sink off, it automatically kicks the pump off. I can't have a switch to turn the water pump on and off on my carts. The city doesn't require the city doesn't allow that. So, or the health department doesn't allow that. So, these are all things that you want to take into consideration when you're talking to these people and and, and finding out what re, what's what's required on your cart. Um, you know, these are some of the questions to ask. Do you can my water pump be on a switch? Because some some cart manufacturers put switches on their carts. You might have to replace a water pump if that's the case. I did. Um, solar. It's an option. You know, I have solar on my carts. My carts, because obviously the water pumps require um, batteries, and so I put solar panels on my carts to automatically recharge those batteries. I put solar panels and charge controllers to automatically recharge my batteries, so I don't have to worry about taking the batteries out of the carts every night and recharging them. Um, if that's an option, you know, you might, if that's something you'd be interested in, you might, you, you might ask your health department. They might not allow that. The city might not allow that. Uh, these are all just different things that you, you'll want to make sure that you ask your permit provider, whoever you're talking to, whether it be city, county, or state. Um, <coughs> excuse me. These are all questions that you're going to want to ask. Um, to make sure that before you go spend five, six, seven, eight, in some cases ten to fifteen thousand dollars on a hot dog cart, you're going to want to make sure that that hot dog cart is going to meet the requirements of your local city, county, and state. So that is that. Um, this, the, you know, that's all. That's all about all I've got on permits. I hope. You know, you guys were, are able to, I mean, you can get on your cell phone, you, you know, pull up Google on your cell phone. You can Google it through your cell phone. A lot of this information is directly online. You can print out the applications online. It tells you where you can submit it via mail or email. Um, I mean, there's just, it's so simple. The application process is so incredibly simple. So if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to leave me a comment down below. I'm posting a new video every week. This is 52 weeks of dogging. New video every week covering a different topic on how to get you started in your hot dog vending business. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below. Hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit that notification bell so when the next video comes out, you'll get a notification on your phone so you don't miss it. We're doing we're we're doing these as premieres, so the when they come, when they go live, we're doing live chats. I will be on the live chat the first time that these videos air. So if you have questions during the live premiere, I'll be on the live chat monitoring and um, I'll be there to answer them for you as well. So if again, if you have questions, comments, concerns, leave them down below, and I will see you on the next episode of 52 Weeks of Dogging, here with Hot Dogging with Dan.